Hello my friends, welcome to another Mesolite visual tutorial. I am Dominic and in this video we're gonna create a traditional thatch roof or bamboo roof design in Akiket. It is one of the most commonly used roof design in my region and it came as a request from one of our WhatsApp community group member to create this in Akiket. If you want to take part to this incredible team, join by clicking the link in, in the description. I want also to take this opportunity to thank our patrons. Guys, your support is invaluable. If you also want to join our patrons membership platform to access freely the resources and assets that we use to create our YouTube videos, check the link also in the description. With that being said, let's jump straight into Archicad. To start this demonstration, we need a building footprint or a base to put the roof on top. In this case, we can use a slab tool or can use a polyline tool. But I'm going to use a slab tool because I want to create a proper structure. This will act as a base for our, our roof. So I'm going to go here under the design tool palettes on your left side of your interface and then activate the slab tool. Under the geometry method section within the info box, let's activate the rectangular geometry method in order for us to use two points to create our, our floor plane or our, our base of our structure. And then under the structure, make sure you use the basic structure and then use a concrete structural material. And then from there, I need to come here and place the slab. I'll just specify the first point here. Then as I draw diagonally from the first point, I can um, key in the dimensions of my, my floor uh, slab into this dimension tracker. I can just say this, the width is going to be, uh, let's say 12 meters, which is going to be 12,000 millimeters. And then I use downward arrow in your keyboard to access the other dimension. This side is going to be 20 meters, which is, to 20,000 millimeters and then I'll hit enter so that's basically our our footprint of our this structure that we're gonna create I'm just gonna centralize it within the the elevation source markers let's just pick one of the points at the top there and then I can just choose or pick drag command in the pet palette and this will uh, be just positioned centrally to the working space Perfect. From here, let us explore different possibilities that we can create or we can generate geometries in using the roof tool um, or ge generate different geometries for the traditional thatch or bamboo roof using the roof tool. I'm going to activate the roof tool in the design tool palettes and then from here under the geometry method, we can just leave it as a multi-plane because in most cases, traditional roof, you would create multiple planes to come up with that geometry. So I'll leave it under the multi-plane um, geometry method. And then if you come here under construction method section, you'd want to keep it under complex roof. But it doesn't really matter for now because we're going to use magic wand to transfer this into our, our, our building footprint or the floor structure for this okay so as it is now under construction method which is the complex roof it gives us an opportunity to pick points by points to place our roofs for example i can just pick all the corners like that to complete the roof okay i'll hit undo and then i want to introduce you to the magic wand tool by using the space bar key if you press and hold the space bar key while the command or the tool is active it will activate the Kesa as a magic wand Kesa. This indicates that you can pick, we can select elements to place our roof. For example, I can now select the, the floor uh, slab. As you can see, I can just click on it and automatically the roof element will be placed. Okay, so from here, what you see, let me just cancel the command for the roof by hitting on this arrow or you can hit escape this is commonly it's common for uh, multiple programs you know uh, to cancel the previous command you just come here and hit arrow or you hit escape so if you go to the 3d you would see this is what we have in terms of the geometry of uh, this 
created from our rectangular building footprint. One thing that you need to do um, or to check within the roof, it comes as a default parameter. So in this case, you see here our roof edges are being slanted. And normally, normally you don't have it like this. I'll select this and then uh, let's scroll down here or we can scroll down, either scroll down here to access the parameter for, to change the roof edge angle, which is this section. And then click on this arrow to key in the plumb or perpendicular uh, uh, cut like that okay this is one of the important thing another one is the pitch so if you scroll down here you would find the roof pitch and height or roof pivot height and pitch in this case it's under it's around 45 square uh, degrees which is something that i want i'll keep it as it is at the moment we also have the eaves overhang which is the section we can uh, um, uh, extend this or reduce this by by just keying in the value here so these are one of the po most important thing another thing is to change the structure you could see we have two levels in our roof we have two sections or two layers this is because it's been created by using a composite profile so under structure here on your info box you'd see it's under the composite we have just a basic and composite in this case we just want to keep it basic let's just click on the basic it will give you this the material will be um i'll just stay uh timber structure for example and then from here what you want is to uh, you can also access these parameters in an extended window by clicking on the settings dialog for the the roof which is going to be on this uh, section or on this icon. If you click on this icon, you would access all these um, parameters with nicely organized in sections. As you could see, we have geometry and positioning, multi-plane geometry, and then floor plan and section to um, deal with the parameters of uh, 2D graphics. And um, we have the model section to deal with the, the 3D uh, representation of your element. In this case, for the we're going to override the top surface to be something like uh, if, you, if you search for thatch in Akiet, by default we don't have that material or bamboo. We don't have that material. So it will be for us to create that surface in order for us to come and use. For the time being, I'll just um, find just a paint material. Let's just find a paint. Then we use that paint. We'll, we'll come and create our own um, thatch or bamboo surface in the later stage of this, pro of this um, demonstration. Don't worry about that. Okay, so from here, let's now explore the different ways of um, ex uh, extracting or creating geometries of a roof, traditional roof in Akiket. For example, if you come here on this corner, we can either pick this point and then we can uh, fillet or chamfer this I'm going to use uh, maybe, let's say, 2 meters radius. And then I'll apply this to all the corners. And then hit OK. You see, we can create something like this on the corners of your roof. If we take, let's just uh, pick this. I'll select this two. To select two elements in Archicad, is either you draw a rectangle above, like just click the first point like that, and then... I will enclose everything or just uh, make sure it casts one of these two elements to select all the elements or just by using the quick selection uh, method I can make sure it's, it's, it's active as you can see the quick selection method here it indicates it's active so you could also check on your Kesa you would see by uh, the Kesa representing that the quick selection is active the quick selection allows you to just pick or select elements direct on the workspace. I can just select this by clicking on it. And then if I want to add another selection, which is this um, floor slab, I can shift hold and then click again to select this two. What I want to do is to make a copy of this. I'll right click, then go to move and uh, drag a copy, or you can just hit control shift D in your, in your, your keyboard. That's a shortcut for uh, copying elements. So that's basically that uh, in terms of this. So let's explore the, the other ways of doing 
the geometry, I'll get rid of that, and then I'll pick parameters of this roof, and uh, let's apply the roof to this floor slab. In this case, I'm going to use, like I've said, uh, the magic wand tool. You press and hold the spacebar key, then click on the element. All right. So from here, it sits on zero, but what you want to do is to be on the same level with this one. So I can just uh, select it and increase the height of it, the base offset, which is this value under the roof pivot height, and make it uh, three meters. All right. So initially, from the previous roof, we picked this corner. So let's see how if we pick this the, the reference line instead of the corner point. In this case, I'm going to pick the corner of the reference line here and then fillet or chamfer. Let's apply to all corners and then see what the results we we'll get from this. See, we have this kind of result. Uh, let me just hit escape. If you hit O to orbit, you can see we've created a different or, or something different from what we created before by uh, manipulating this point. So it looks fantastic. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, what it, this would mean in other designs but yes the thing the problem that I have with this um, uh, method is that the curve just ends here I would want to have the curvature extending all the way to the corner there all right so let's explore another method or another way of creating this geometry I'm going to take this um, floor slab and pick one of the points and drag it while I'm still dragging, or while I'm in the command of dragging, I can add a copy by uh, hitting Control in your keyboard. You'd see your cursor changes to a plus sign, or it will add another uh, graphic to a plus sign. That indicates it's carrying a copy. I'll click here to place the copy. In this case, I'm going to uh, perform some chamfer into this um, element. I'm going to pick this corner, and uh, let's pick Fillet again. And then I'm going to say, in this case, let's apply to all corners. And then hit OK. So let's pick parameters of the roof again. Or you can just hit W to repeat the uh, previously placed um, element with the same, with the custom settings. Okay. Because what you want, you want to, we don't we want to avoid going through setting out the parameter, the parameters again. Uh, or redoing the parameters again for our roof element. You just hit W to repeat that, and then you can uh, press and hold your command shift, I mean your, your, your space bar uh, key to activate the magic wand. Then click on your element like we did before. So this is the results you can get just by doing this. I can take this and uh, set it to 3 meters height on the uh, roof pivot height section so like I said also this one the problem that I have with this is the curvature just stops along the way it doesn't go all the way to the roof uh, ridge edges so it would be nicer to have this going all the way there. another way of doing it is to let's just copy another this roof I mean this floor slab again let's hit control to add a copy to there and this time around I'm going to uh, fillet there's difference between fillet and chamfer in Akiket so I'm gonna just come here instead of fillet I'm going to use chamfer this time around and apply to all corners and then hit ok we have now the chamfered corners instead of fillet so I'm gonna pick the parameters of this roof by alt hold in your keyboard and then click on this element or you can just come here and pick parameters um, uh, tool within your top menus and then you click on the element and that will activate the roof tool with the previous uh, uh, parameters so I'm going to shift I mean uh, space bar key hold and place that so let's set this to 3 meters height set this to 3 meters height so this is the kind of result you get from a chamfered uh, uh, a floor plan and again the the chamfer doesn't go all the way to the roof edge or the roof ridge you get to the height of the roof so 
in most cases you'd want i don't know uh, i've seen in our region you would have this continue all the way if you can, even if you can select this there's no how you can edit this point i'll, I'll be impressed if a kid could allow us to take this point for example and then modify it to the edge of or to the top part of the roof if it's possible like the other parameters because i know for this point i can play around with some 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 angles like this so i would assume they could do the same for the modified one i can increase the height i can uh, tilt the roof uh, edge stuff like that so undo and i'll uh, be happy sorry i'll be happy if they can introduce the editing of this of this result okay so that's basically what you have and then um one last thing that i want us to understand for example on, on this one you can add uh some some curvature to your to your, your 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 roof for example if i click on this edge for example I'd, if i click on this edge let me say click on this it will give me these parameters on the pet palette uh, it will give me a chance to insert a point or curve this edge i want to curve this edge to somewhere there okay so this is the result i can get if you curve the edge i can also do the side do on this side as well stuff like this so this is basically what you get yes so yeah with the image with the reference image that i got from the member who requested me to do this uh, video it is something like a roof that has layers i can if i can remember i'll put the reference image on the top right corner them I'm, I'm sure you see that so this design it has different layers and at the same time it's caving and the curvature within the corners goes all the way to the roof ridge point so that's what basically what challenge we are having now we're going to see how we can approach that challenge so i'm going to delete everything or maybe let's just instead of deleting everything yeah let me just delete everything and start that from scratch i'll delete uh, oh sorry delete this and i'll delete this roof to remain with this uh, uh slab so um there are, there are different ways let me just make a copy of this slab so that i don't mess up with that just pick parameters i mean just pick one of the points and then add a copy like that so i forgot to introduce you to if you curve for example this like that this will lead us to the design for that um, reference image so if i curve this like that not to curve yes if i no let me not to curve if i pick the point and uh, chamfer this by using a more significant value let's say maybe 3.5 and then apply to all corners and if we repeat the previous command for the roof by hitting w in your keyboard and your roof will be activated if you press and hold your shift i mean sp sorry the space bar to activate the magic one graphically you could see now our points they go all the way to the edge of or to the top of our ridge this is what you want so that means you need to play around with the uh, the value of your chamfering in order for you to achieve this i can place that like that you see now we have this all the way the curve or the chamfer goes all the way to the point even even though it's not that perfect but you can play around and try to make it perfect for example if i go back again and increase the value of the let me undo if increase the value of the chamfer to maybe 3.7 then apply to all corners hit w to repeat the roof command and then press it went all beyond i think 
3.7 is too much let's undo and make it 3.550 if you hit w to activate the roof then uh, press space bar and hold you see we're almost there we're almost there it's not that perfect i think we need maybe a lesser value let me chamfer like that maybe instead of 50 i would make it 10. And then apply to all corners and w and hold your space bar yes this is perfect this is really it's almost it's almost gents or maybe i can <laughs> i can make make it 20 instead of 10. let's do it again do it 20. apply to all corners hit w and space bar hold mm. almost almost <laughs> almost guys yeah but that's basically how you can achieve that and then there is another way again you can make it round or make it chamfered like that so if we say undo and then this time around we're going to chamfer i mean we're going to fillet the same value and then okay so if we w to no, not this way not this way what you want maybe i can convert this into a curve like that same applies to the side a curve then w to repeat the roof then space bar and hold and place you see you can also achieve this kind of uh design okay so but with what we have from the reference image let me just delete this we're gonna uh, fillet all the corners chamfer sorry and then apply to all the corners like that and then hit w again and space bar to place this let's set this to three meters height under the roof pivot height right okay so this is what we have and uh, if we go to the plan view we're going to um make this edges or the yeah the curve to the edges to convert them to an arc I'm going to convert this to an arc by using the reference of the by using the reference line okay so i'm going to do the same to this here to the reference line and all of this like that same to this one this is the last one perfect so you'd have something like this in the floor plan so if we go back to the 3d you would have uh this all right so now let's see how we can create those three levels or three layers so i'm going to go back or maybe within the 3d i can w again to activate the roof then i'm going to uh, hold space bar to magic one that and uh, i'm going to take this all the way to three meters three meters like this from here like i said we need to take this or offset all the edges of that i'm going to pick one of the points and uh, offset all edges let's offset all the edges all the way to here because we want to create the roof ridge and in most cases here in our region we use either steel or concrete not concrete per se but uh, a cement ground to cover this top Okay. so you normally have a, 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 a waterproofing membrane underneath and then you put the cement grout on top and then we have another one let's again hit w and uh, magic wand to the floor take this again to three meters up and pick one of the points to offset all edges all the way to there to create another layer to create another layer we i'm going to again um, hit w and magic wand another layer again take this also to three meters and magic i mean sorry offset all edges to 
create the third layer that will be somewhere here okay we have three layers even though they're not uh, ideally they are supposed to be equal in terms of that but for the sake of this demonstration let's just leave it the way it is all right so from there what we need to do i'll start with the top one no let's start with this one start with this one um let's scroll down here and then make the height to be i want to step it by 100 each each layer will be stepping at 100 this one was gonna be 3.1 and then to select the other ones i need to go to the float and view and uh, select this step by 3.2 hit ok this one will step by 3.3 then continue if we check on 3d we have this kind of layers Okay, and we need to convert this into X. Let's go to the ground floor. No, here they're not captured because they are an above or above uh, the beyond this story, which is going to be on st at the upper story. I'm gonna start with this one. I'm gonna convert this into a curve. Do the same to the side all the side I'm gonna convert so for you in order for you to be accurate make sure okay let me just undo and to show you how you can be accurate in terms of your curve right I'm going to take um, a polyline tool under documents section let's pick activate the polyline tool and then I'm gonna draw a polyline on these elements let's go to the second one where is the second one the third one let's see how many layers we should have all the layers here i don't know why the third one is not visible but anyway it's fine we'll come back to it so i'm gonna take this polyline right I'm going to use it as a guide for the curve that I'm going to do. So, I mean the arc of the of the these curves. So, I'm going to pick the point and then offset all edges to I'm going to use 400. And I'm going to take this convert to here convert to arc also there do the same to this one this way I know I am accurate in terms of that if you check on 3d you'd have your top layer like that let's go for this one this one's supposed to be under its ground I don't know why it's not visible here you know here is not visible okay this is the one i saw it i found it so let's just pick the parameters of this polyline and apply the polyline to this okay by magic wand so i'm going to tap because yeah i think this is one of the challenges that or frustrations that you can encounter while you're dealing with this so this polyline is very difficult for me to select it but if you zoom in here you can see it here and then you can click on it but in case you don't have that um, freedom to pick it you can go back to the polyline tool and then hit ctrl a you could see now you have your your polyline activated i can deselect the ones that i don't want by shift hold and then click on them okay so this time around i can just pick this point and uh, uh, offset all edges by 400 okay and then i can take this no that's not the one like, yeah this is the one and convert everything to arc i hope this guys helps i'm trying by all means to share everything in in terms of all the problems that you can encounter and how and possible solutions to that.
okay let me know in the comment section what you think about this process and uh, let's interact and i'll make sure i respond to each and every question or comment that is coming about on this video and then i can just do this one okay so yes if you check on 3d we have this converted perfect so i'm going to take select the top reach part because this is going to be a, a like i said it's either being a, a steel or a metal material or a concrete or sorry a cement grout i'm gonna change this material to be a steel stainless steel or whatever then go to the up i mean the settings under the model let's override this to be uh, i'll say metal steel and then i'll link all the surfaces hit ok to be like that perfect okay so the other ones will be a fetch or bamboo material so we'll uh, have to uh, set a custom surface for this okay let's set a custom surface for the but before we set a custom surface we'll come and do it later stage i want us to do the the structure the support of this because you cannot just hang or float like this you need the support and then the support is very a tricky one as well to deal with here in akiket so what i need to do is to go back to the ground floor plan and activate the i'm gonna use a column tool right it's very good to use a column tool because it's perfect for you can slant and uh, slant it to an, any angle you want so i'm going to activate it and then let's change the structure to a circular column and set the material to be i'll go for timber because normally we use uh, a, a wood called it's compound. I don't know what, what type of material. It's supposed to be. It's a pine material, but it's been treated to by this tar as pressure test uh, treated. So I'm gonna just say timber structural and uh, set the width of this to 300. 300 is fine or 200. Let's say the the diameter of this 200. And then I'm going to place it here. No, here on the edge of the 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 footprint check on 3d we have our column like that okay this is i think i can increase this to 300 but 200 is fine right from here i will uh, select this column on the floor plan and go to its settings let's slant make sure you are under column section here on this um, settings dialog and under positioning let's go for the slanted um, column and then set this to 45 degrees because i remember our pitch of the roof is 45 degrees then hit ok to apply these changes by default it will be slanted vertically so we need to rotate it i'm going to pick it from here this will be the rotating point of uh, or the point of rotation will be this um, center or the center of the column and then i can rotate in your pet palette like i said this will be the you have to click the the point of rotation and then i'm going to define the axis of rotation which is going to be along the length of the column then rotate it like that to this angle perfect from here we need to extend our column all the way to the top or to the corner there to the top of our roof so I'm going to pick one of the points here, center, then um, um, activate the stretch height command all the way to the roof reach. So if you check on 3D, you would have something like this. Okay, we uh, the best way to position this column is to cut a section along that and then position it within the section view. So to cut a section in Akiket, let's go to the design tool palettes and then under the viewpoints, under the viewpoints uh, section, sorry, you can activate the section. Let's draw a section along this um, axis. I'm going to draw from here, then 
specify the second point all the way make sure it goes beyond your structure like this so the viewing direction of the column i mean of the section doesn't really matter so i'm just gonna choose the site and i'm gonna pick or activate sorry select the, the section and stretch it from this point i'm gonna stretch it so that you can go beyond because it's very important to have it like that all right from here you can right click in your space bar on in your workspace sorry and open this with current view settings to open your section there we go we have your elements like that so i need to have a reference where this point is going to be so i'm going to draw a polyline from there let's go to the documents i'm gonna collapse this and pick either polyline or just a line tool either would work so i'm gonna draw it from here to there so i can just select the line again and then go to the top menu bar and adjust find the adjust tool there and then i'm gonna adjust it all the way to the the reference or the zero line okay so now i need to select this and i'm going to use the midpoint or the reference line for the column to move this on top of this uh, line so let's pick from there and then move by using just drag and then place it there in this way we can now uh, modify the angle because you could see the angle doesn't really match our roof so we could modify this angle by clicking on the point of your reference at the top then uh, we have this uh, modify the angle in your pet palette click on that then you can modify all the way to the line is this the line yes i think it's accurate now okay once you are done with this you need to move your column back to the inside because it has to be in the inside of your yeah inside of your element so let me just move it from there perfect i would want to create enough space between this is it this accurate i don't think so i don't think so let me take this line change its color to maybe a blue line so that it can guide us i can stretch it all the way the line all the way maybe i would adjust it here adjust it all the way to the top there so that yes you could see this has to match with the center point so i can pick this point adjust or modify the angle to there now i'm perfect i am okay oh sorry here yeah, sorry it needs to be on the edge yes the reference line should be on top of the blue line that's what i wanted so even if i take this line you can see it's right on the center of our column that's what i wanted okay so like i said from there you have to take or move the column inside to there so that you can create enough space normally in construction we would have pair lines that will support the the, the bamboo or the grass or the thatch sorry so that it has to be the space between this uh, roof and this column this space will be for the pair lines I normally use 48 by 48 pellets in terms of the size in our region, the site. So that means I need to have the space. This gap has to represent that. So if I draw here, it has to be 48 by 48. But this is 100. For the sake of this, let's just leave it at 100. Or you can just draw 48 like that. Draw a line of 48 and then, sorry, you can select your column. And line and then move it like that but this would change this I can stretch the column by using the stretch height all the way to there so the column also need to be stretched at the top to go all the way let's stretch to be all the way to the roof edge like that let me just move it somewhere here perfect 
Now my column is perfectly positioned. I can check on 3D and very impressed with that. Let me change the material for this column. I'm going to change it. Let's go to the settings and under the segment section, we can override the surfaces. I'm going to override all the surfaces. Change this to wood material. If you search for wood, there's this um, wood walnut. Uh, this will represent what I want because it's a column it's vertically inclined so I need to pick the vertical because the, if you look at architect some of this material I created to align with the orientation of the element we have horizontal uh, surface and then vertical surface in this case because we are dealing with a column we're going for a vertical um, surface if we were to do with a beam it's, it's advisable to use a horizontal uh, surface okay so let's link the surfaces to change all of them then hit ok perfect so that's what i wanted now from here i need to take this to all the points so let's go back to our our floor plan select the column i'll control shift m and mirror a copy to the other side and then also we need to transfer it to, to this line and then that line as well so let's see how best we can move this i'm gonna use this point to move them i don't know why they are not right on the center i'm gonna control d this is supposed to be right on the center like that so make, make sure even this side is the same thing just move it from here to the point check on section if this didn't affect your elements but perfect that perfectly positioned all right from here what we need to do is to i'll pick it from here because i need to i can mirror sorry i can mirror by using this reference point or this midpoint let's just control shift m again to mirror and then pick this as a reference point then boom i'm going to mirror it the other side as well control shift m and then use this as a reference point then boom then select all the elements all the columns then group them by control g or going to the edit grouping and group your elements i'm going to mirror this to the other side as well control shift m and use this midpoint to take this to the other side perfect if you check on 3d we have our structure support like that this is not complete i can now uh, have we have some vertical columns inside as per the the reference image we have some columns that are vertically on the inside of our building so i'm going to place that so let's go back to the column tool under design tool palettes and let's uh, follow the same I'm going to go to settings, override the surfaces to wood with vertical, make sure they are all linked, and then hit OK. They are somewhere there, something like that. Yes, but uh, it needs to be inside, I don't know why. So it needs to be inside. So I'm going to change the reference of the reference line for this column to be on the edge so that it can be in the inside of the the building okay to do that let's select this column and then go to back to the its settings under column section we want to change the reference axis to be on the outside the location to be on the outside and then hit okay it will be positioned inside so if we check on 3d it will be inside which is the way we want it perfect so now we can um, uh, multiply it along all the points. But before you multiply, you need to see or check the, the connection between this. Normally, you would have a beam that will run around, the beam around that will support these members. Okay, let's do that and we'll come into the beam. So I'm going to pick this corner. I'm going to mirror a copy to the other side like that 
and pick parameters of the same column and place it here where is it place it there and uh, make sure you position it by this point I'm gonna control shift M to mirror a copy to the other side and then I'm going to group these columns by control G or going to edit grouping and group then uh, I'm going to control shift M by using the midpoint of the structure to take this to the other side so if we check on 3d you would have uh, the structure like that normally we would have some intermediate um, columns as well so no, I will just take it let's take this one I will suspend this group so that I can just se select the elements individually and then pick this point and drag in your pet palette then uh, add a copy by control I can just place it somewhere here four meters is fine then I can mirror it Control shift M to mirror a copy to the other side like so select the two columns make sure you group them first and Control shift M to mirror it to the other side using this oh sorry Control M and then shift mirror it to the side Control shift M mirror a copy to the other side yeah and then this is what you have in your in your 3d okay so like i said we need to have a beam that is on top of this vertical columns so i'm going to hide this uh, roof so that you can have enough working space or to see clearly what you are dealing with so let me just right click on this workspace then layers hide the layer for the roof this is basically what we have we need i'm very interested on this joint okay so let me draw a beam that will run around on top of this vertical columns first let's activate the beam tool the beam has to be the same materials as well so it has to be um, on a circular structure and the material will be timber structure then i'm going to open its settings under the segment i want to override the material to be wood um, like I said, this time around, because it's a beam, we're going to go for horizontal walnut. Make sure all the, uh, all the surfaces are linked. And then hit OK to apply the changes. I'm going to use the geometry method of a chained method. Because I want to draw this beam points by point. From here all the way to this. By the look of things, it looks the diameter for the beam is huge. We'll come and reduce it after placing after placement so i'm going to use column points to place this like that and then finish it here okay so if we check on 3d you would have your column there it's grouped because we're using a chained method so let's suspend our group to select all the elements then change this elevation for the for this to what is the height of this column of the columns it's 2.8 so we need to select or change the elevation to 2.8 there we go and the diameter let's scroll down in your info box and find the cross section size and then make it 200 to match our structure or other columns this is what we have that's how you support this you also need to have uh, some kind of some triangulated elements at the top here for the ridge as well so i'm going to pick the parameter of the same beam then uh, let's go to i don't know which level this will be but i can just 
click on one of the points then use and restrict your column your beam sorry on the horizontal axis like that on the yellow line you see this line so if you shift hold it will restrict it even if you can play around with your cursor it will be restricted horizontally so i'm gonna restrict it all the way to there then right click hit ok because i've used the chained method to place this so let's see where this is i'm going to select it and it's under story 2 okay but if you go to floor plan and section again you could say show on all stories i wanted to show on all stories that i can let's go to the story 2 so i also want to see the projections of this of the columns because here it will determine the size or the position of this horizontal beam so I'm gonna select all of them and then go to floor plan and section here and then uh, I'm going to say instead of just uh, displayed as um, projected displayed on the floor plan let's make it projected with overhead so that it can go all the way right so this way it can give us a guide in which way we can do our thing normally we'd have it as two members here you can have it at two members but one member is also fine it's also fine so if you check on 3d perfect and then again we would have another cross member or bracing member for this column i mean for this beam there so i'm going to pick the parameters of this beam go back to the floor plane view and then i will draw it from this point to this point perfect if you check on 3d we need to let me hit o to activate the orbit tool so this is the horizontal bracing member we need to take it up maybe by 500 oh sorry 1.5 you need to do it in such a way that it connects 100 percent perfect so if you say 1.2 yes this is almost ah it's perfect it's perfect okay so that's what i wanted and i can mirror the copy to the other side as well go back to the floor plan view and now take this Control shift m in this case i want to use the roof instead of oh, let me just Control shift m and then use the center point of this beam and then i'll make sure here it's right on the center of this column so i'm gonna control d to move it right there check on 3d voila perfect you could also drop this member i have another member there let me just do it control shift d and then drop it all the way to there so i'm going to stretch this on 3d by using this um, stretch the length and zoom in there maybe i would find the surface of the edge of this beam it doesn't go all the way so they have to match in terms of the height so i can pick parameters of this beam and then Control alt to inject to this beam so that they can match the height and stretch again maybe all the way to inside perfect sorry bring it bring it here yes and do the side stretch all the way to there perfect so that's basically how you support uh, your your element and then within the, the the structure as well i'll have to have this copy or to have other intermediate trusses that will come just on the from the column going up instead of just going beyond like these three or like the the, 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 the the these slanting ones so i'm gonna go back to the ground plan and uh i'll pick this column i'll pick this column okay and suspend group so that you can select this individually and then uh this column i'm going to 
control shift e to rotate a copy control shift to rotate a copy from this point right that will be the center point or the position of rotation and rotate it like that so in 3d you would see it uh, here but what we want is this to start from right on top of the column so i'm gonna pick it from there sorry pick the point and think uh what you call stretch the height or stretch the height all the way to there but it can have a little bit of an overhang let's just zoom in so that you can see it can have a little bit of an overhang like that okay and uh in order for it to be positioned nicely because i don't think it will we need to cut a section to the to resolve that so let's take the same section i'm going to rotate it um to be horizontal like that then move it right on the middle of this so if you open the section it will guide us in terms of the position of this uh beam which is this one okay i'm going to control d move the beam to the inside you see even at the top there it's not accurately in line but what we need to do is to i'll pick it from this edge and then bring it right somewhere here yes that will be the connection that i'm looking for here at the bottom and then at the top what we're going to do is to select one of the points here and then modify the angle to be right there and then i can stretch this all the way to the top so we're gonna come back here again to try fix this i think it has to be let's modify this just to be in line with the other columns perfect so we have that so in 3d you'd have something like that wow nice we can run a multiple copies around there and then mirror a copy to the other side that will complete our structure for the roof so i'm going to pick this let's pick that where exactly should be this visible okay it's here let's pick this and uh multiply in your pet palette um do i need to multiply because i have to be smart here i can just control shift d and then move this by 2.5 right by 2.5 and then i can take this to control shift m and then mirror to the other side i'll use this center point and then mirror to the other side perfect i think this is the best way of doing it and then select all and control g to uh, group control shift m and mirror it to vertically to the other side now you have a complete structure for your your roof okay in most cases again you'd have the pair lines the pair lines i would use a tool called or an object called buttons so if you go back to the floor plan here and then if you activate the object tool there's a object let's open the settings there's an object called buttons let's search for buttons here this is the two button for roof tires in this case i'm going to use 48 by 48 um, dimensions as a cross section of this and then the the angle is going to be 45 i know it's not going to be accurate i will come later and adjust that hit ok to apply the changes and then i'm going to apply it here let's because at the this is at the back or at the down the down the bottom of your 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 roof so i need to mirror this to the other side let's just mirror or rotate to the other side <coughs> sorry about that <laughs> now i can uh, position this um, on the center like that and stretch this all the way let's stretch this from here to there stretch this again to there you'd want to confirm first on 3d just confirm first on 3d this okay you see where is this i need to 
cut a section and make sure it's well positioned. So to do that, let's take this same section line, control, or I can just cut another section. Let's go to the viewpoints, activate the section, and then cut a vertical section like that. And the viewing side would be this direction. Let's select the action, I mean the section, right click on the space, then open with current view settings. Okay, so these are your buttons. I'm going to, or your pair lines. I'm going to take it from there. They're going to start from right here. Okay, but it look by the look of things, they sit nicely with it. You can also increase or stretch them all the way to the top within your section line like that. Perfect. So if we check on 3D, you'd have your elements like that. So how do you trim off the ends? Okay, but this is supposed to be all the way. Okay, let me do it on the floor plan. So this here is supposed to be stretched all the way to there. Same applies to the side. And then I need to come at the bottom there and then click one of these points to draw or to modify the angle. Where is the angle here it's supposed to be? Perfect. And then this side as well. This is supposed to be. Yes. Ah, oh, no. It's not the one. It's this one. Yes. Mm, it's not well accurate, but uh, let me just might be this one perfect this is accurate so if you check on 3d you'd have your elements like that mm? isn't this um great guys let me know in the comment section this is perfect <laughs> so i'm going to now mirror copy to manipulate this into the other sides okay so let's control shift m mirror copy from here to there um, yes, and then do the same. Control Shift M. I'll mirror copy by using this point to the other side. So you, I can select this, and then Control G to group them. If we check in 3D, you would have your pair lines like that. I can mirror the same to the other side. Let's just use the center point horizontally, and then place it to the side. Voila. Perfect. For the inside, I mean for this side, you can just continue. I'm gonna go back. Let's select one of this and uh, control shift. I mean control shift E to rotate a copy. I'm gonna rotate this horizontally like that. Okay. So, no, no, no. So it's supposed to be. Let's rotate it again. I'm going to rotate it from here so that it can be horizontally aligned like that. And then I'm going to control D, move it right to there. On this side, I'm going to modify the angle. Yeah, the angle is fine there. And I can stretch it from this point all the way to this point. Voila. And then I can control shift M and uh, mirror a copy to the other side if you check on 3d we have a complete structure for our thatch or bamboo roof is in this great guys so if i can change the override here on the bottom i can change uh, choose a simplified version so that you can see it clearly and nicely without different uh, pens of your elements so this is great. I can bring back the roof, uh, the fetch roof element. Let me control L to bring the layers. Or you can just go to options and find element attributes, then layer settings. You can hit control L to access that. So from there, I can uh, just click on the drafting layer combination or scroll down and find the shell roof and activate the layer and hit okay so that will be activated like so 
so inside you see you have that and wow that was impressive so now the last section is to not not last because we have we're gonna create a layer i mean a layout and presentation for this um the sec another section is to create uh, the surface for the the fetch so i'm gonna do that by going to options menu and uh, element attributes let's find sorry element attributes and then find surfaces okay what you want to do here is to find the roof let's just search for the roof material okay and then select one of the roof there i want to duplicate this because i want to the newly created roof fetch it has to be uh, positioned within this category so the best way to do that is to duplicate right i'll go duplicate and then i'm only gonna change the this name i will say fetch or bamboo fetch then change or remove tiles something like that okay we have this within the section of the roof this is advisable guys you don't you don't want to replace the the elements within architect i will just want to add more but also respect the structure of how things are being in architect and then add on top of the structure that's where you manage well your project guys and then from there i'm going to uh, i'm going to come down here under texture to replace this texture i'm going to click on this browse um, folder uh, icon and then hit hit add let's um, have is i'm gonna open the desktop to locate the image that you have texture this image you can find it in different websites guys online you can find 3d sketchup i mean 3d uh, uh, sketchup textures there are plenty there are plenty of sites that you can find this um, textures from so for the sake of this demonstration i already uh, downloaded one for this and then i would select it hit open wait a bit for it to be loaded here and then you can hit okay this will be placed here we can come later and adjust the sizes of this to blow it up or reduce later if we want but for the sake of this let's just leave it this uh, i can go here under the cover fill and try to find the fill that will represent our our thatch maybe i can see uh, what can i use maybe i can just use this wooden planks what do you think or or what or grass yeah i don't think grass will be that good ah let's just leave it under grass <laughs> and then the exposure light we have the surface color we have to match the surface color to our our grass just to be matching this color i think this is fine hit okay then i can hit okay so let's select all our elements and apply the surface open the settings of the roofs under model let's override the surfaces to roof fetch this is our roof fetch make sure you link all the surfaces then boom voila perfect wow this is crazy it's nice okay so the last section is to be to create a presentation for this um i would like to find a a view i think this view will be perfect yes I'll, I'll create this view just find a a good shot and uh go here under the view map and then let's just collapse this all and find 3d 3d folder i'm going to save this under this folder let's just save this view here if you go under the, there's this save current view down below there let's hit on this icon of save this current view i'm going to override the name to be a custom name then say i'll just say uh, roof perspective something like that and then create 
we have this view. Even if we can change this to a something different, we can always come back to that exact view. Okay? This is very important, guys. And then from there, I can right-click on the screen and convert this into a 3D document. Then I would say also roof perspective is the name. Create. There we go. And then within our... We need to save our 3D document here. Okay, here it's already saved. If we click on this, and then it will give you this, right? This is the 3D document. So what I need to do is to right click on the 3D documents and then go to 3D document settings. And I want to open the section for model appearance. Within this section, what I want is to make the lines the lines uniform within this document. So I'm going to use this uh, uncut elements section, which is un uniform uncut pens. Okay, let's check the box. Then uh, change this to a 0 0.13 color. And I can also um, activate the shadows if I want. Then I can hit OK. So that way I will have this kind of presentation. Wow. Okay. So from here, I would go to the layout book to create a sheet. Okay, I'm going to create a sheet. But before I create a sheet, let's just go here under masters because that's the one that hosts our third block. I'll open the A1 and get rid of this architect uh, template uh, title block. And then I'll create a new layout. I would say roof, roof layout something like that i would use the same um, a1 landscape uh, master layout which is the one that we've deleted the title block and then hit create okay so i, I normally let's go back to the a1 i normally we can go to the settings of this uh, master layout here under settings down below and then i normally make the margin zero for my okay from here we need to bring our oh because we've changed the margins let's go back to our roof layer to see it also being updated okay so what you need to do is to bring our i want to take the roof plan the elevate the section and the 3d document i'll start with the 3d document because it's one that is most interesting Let's go back here under the view, uh, the viewpoints. Then let's just drag and drop our roof perspective document. All right. Let's. Um, I can just stretch this to increase its height. I mean, to increase its size by using this stretch. I do and then move it somewhere here. Stuff like that. Maybe I'll pick one of the points again and then uh, offset all edges just to create a nice bleed around. Something like that. Right. And then I can go back again and find uh, the floor plan. Under floor plan. So just here under the project map, I can drag and place the floor plan there. Select it. Pick this curve. Stretch it to fit the other material and then this will be positioned somewhere here I can crop this a bit control D to move it right on the edge like that to create enough space and then here I can have a section let's find I think I don't let's go back to here I don't want to create uh, to take this section I want the the shorter one or the short one let's just do that that if you open the section and i want to delete this line control l to bring our layers and then make sure this the the shell roof layer is active and then hit ok to be placed like that perfect we have a nice section and go back which section is this let me see the top one and go back to our layout and uh, we go to the project map 
drag the section place it here we can we can increase its scale if you want but for the sake of this i'll just stretch like so stretch also this to there and control d move it somewhere there yeah perfect that's basically how you do your your layout in archicad so you can also go back here right click on the section and then open the source view to access the section as well you can play around with some some section settings for example if you say come here you can go down below onto settings right and then find the model appearance and then still achieve i can increase this by stretching down here and then say i want under uncut elements i can also use the same strategy to use one uniform cut pen you can also ch check your shadows if you want and you can also modify this by saying i mean the cut elements and then maybe you say uh, you want surface color non-shaded or you can also use the uniform cut pen and then you choose a thicker pen for the cut pens which is 0 0.35 something like this perfect so if you go back this will be updated there like that i think i can move it somewhere here and then this can go down below whatever perfect so that's basically it guys um let me know in the comment section what you think about this video i really appreciate your effort if you made to if you managed to make it to this far i really thank you guys and um, check the files for this uh, project in the uh, description just find the link on the description it's in our patreon platform make sure you support us guys that's the only way you can support this channel to continue create videos like this i thank you for uh, your time and i also want to take this opportunity to thank the uh, gentleman who requested for this uh, tutorial i really thank you for your contribution to this channel check also our resources from our site our store yeah, your templates um, objects uh, uh, we have ebooks there we have a lot of uh, resources that you can use to optimize and improve your workflow and ultimately create a high-end architectural project okay i'll see you in the next video make sure to subscribe if you haven't like and share this video with those that you think they will benefit from it and i'll see you in the next video bye bye